have been making psychology videos for over 10 years. I have done my own research in psychology. I've given lectures. And one thing that I noticed just recently that is never kind of acknowledged in simple terms is that life is hard and it's difficult and it's hard to do stuff. I've had a tough time over the past year and because I'm me, I did a deep dive into the psychology of resilience and coping. And what I started doing was finding all of these ways that I could try to help myself cope that were backed by science. And I figured that this could be helpful to other people. So whether you are having a bad day, having a bad go of it, you just want to build a small daily practice that might help you just get through the day, this video is for you. This is what I did to get through the worst year of my life. I've had this video idea for about six months. It's been hard to get around to filming it, so I had to enlist a friend to come and help me <laughs> do <Hello>. it. <laughs> also, I hope that was like a shot of just my nose. We'll get to the science and my strategies soon, but first, I'm sure you have a lot of questions, so here's a quick rundown of my terrible year. So it all started probably about a year and a half ago. This is going to be news to a lot of you and I'm really sorry, but my dog Luna passed away. She was sick for some time before she died and anyone who's had a pet go through that experience, which I know is a lot of people, it's really tough because you don't know when the right time is. She had a brain tumour and she was having seizures for a long time, which is really stressful for you because you never know when it's going to happen and I was waking up in the middle of the night because I thought she was having a seizure so I went into this kind of stress response once over it. After that happened, very suddenly, my dad also passed away. He just dropped dead. There was no warning. So I had all of this loss around me. And then I had some personal medical stuff come up, which I'm not gonna get into, but I had to have surgery five times in six months. I was depressed for some time. I was really emotional. I couldn't sit in front of a camera and talk to a camera. I was terrible at doing Patreon updates and telling everyone what I was going through. But what it led to was was me doing a deep dive into, okay, how can I try to cope with everything that's going on? One of the first things I noticed was a physical change. My resting heart rate was elevated, I was jumpy and constantly in this stress response. And it turns out that being a giant ball of stress when it's not necessary, scientifically referred to as prolonged HBA axis activation, leads to hormonal imbalances and is just all round bad. I wanted out. So I started exercising every single day which I had never done before. And the only way that I could do this is by purchasing a membership at a Pilates studio and booking a class every single day. I forced myself to go because research shows that exercise can help buffer against stress and reduce your cortisol response. I was in a really fortunate position where I had the time to do this and I think a lot of people could also do YouTube. There are a lot of great videos on YouTube, 10 minute workouts, 15 minute workouts. Even before bed, some of the research actually suggests that doing low impact exercise before bed is fine. We could just like go outside and crack a whip. Go outside and crack a whip. <laughs> oh, yep, there it is. It's a whip. And then the other thing that I did was I stopped drinking alcohol, which actually has some links with modulating your HPA axis and your stress response. So the main reason I did that was to try to get out of this stress response. And then what I discovered is I actually felt much better. I slept much better and my sleep was a lot more regular, which is a big marker of health and overall health as well. It took a long time. I don't know if I'm fully out of this stress response yet, but I just feel better and that is helpful and it's something that is within my control. While my body was becoming more calm, I was still looking for more ways to deal and I wanted to get out of this headspace that everything was bad all of the time. So I started a gratitude journal in a way that finally stuck. Now I will say gratitude comes up so much in psychology and I have never successfully done this in my life. As I've said, I've been making psychology videos for like 10 years. I've made videos about gratitude before. I have never kept a diary or a journal before. And the only way that I could figure out how to do this was after watching a video by Matt Diavella, where he used an app called Dailyo that you can put in all of these custom things, like categories of things that you might be grateful for, things that you did. And I just started logging my mood and keeping a gratitude journal through tapping icons in an app before I went to bed every night. So I brainstormed all of the things that I needed in order to have a good day. 
exercising, maybe going for a walk, having some good food, going out and getting a coffee, all of the things that brought me joy that I would try to fit into every day just to find these little moments where I could feel joyous in what was otherwise a crappy situation. But then what you get is some kind of like algorithm that you've invented for yourself where you're like, well, I've done this and I've done this and I've done this and I've done this. These are all of the elements that I needed to have a good day. Today's been a good day. And so I rated all of my days like on a Likert scale. And what I found was that all of my days were like four stars out of five. My mood was actually quite stable, even though I was going through this really tumultuous time. It's data. Data, yeah. data, data, data. Yeah, I know, <laughs> and I have all of this data now. Bubble tea time. I guess for me, moments of joy were where I would just feel a bit lighter, a bit frivolous, where I could laugh at something, being with friends, being able to be outdoors in the middle of the day where the weather is beautiful and warm, where I could experience something without having distracting or racing thoughts or kind of feeling sorry for myself. I don't want to say that joy is always positive in an emotional sense, but I would feel more content with how things work. It's my dad's birthday today and I keep getting reminders from Google Calendar and Google Assistant. And Google Assistant is like, do you want to plan something for dad's birthday? I'm like, bro, he's dead. Do I have to delete his birthday from my calendar now? Like, stop reminding me, I'm aware. I'm hyper aware that it's his birthday today. I think it's important to say that some time has passed since these tragic things happened to me. So I did grieve for a long period of time and I'm now feeling okay. And that's why I haven't been posting on this channel a lot over the past few years, but I didn't want anyone to get the impression that these things hadn't affected me because grief also affects everyone differently. Sometimes things are just hard and there's no perfect routine that you can have or perfect habit that you're going to do every single day. Sometimes you just need to find moments of tranquility or joy wherever you can and they might look different to you every day and that's okay. I am the type of person where I wanted to have some kind of regimen because it helped me feel in control and that is what worked for me. I don't want people to feel like you have to do exactly what I've been doing because people deal with everything differently and I was really focused on my HBA access and trying to control my stress levels and this kind of chronic stress that I had. So I think find whatever works for you. There are all different kinds of ways that you can relax, that some people find video games really therapeutic. Uh, so I think just find what works for you, cut yourself some slack, be kind to yourself and just try to stick to whatever works as well as you can. Data? Data? You say data? What do you say? Data. Why? Data. Why? You've been in America too long. We say data here. Do we? Yeah. Data. They say data in America. Oh my God. What's happened to you? I'm on the wrong side of TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> you're on the data side of TikTok. In the UK, they say data mostly. Mm. Australia just has this really long da -da. data. 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 G'day, can I have some data? I just chucked <laughs> that in my joy tracker so I can look at the data. Data.